Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you several different ways to mic a grand piano. We're going to be using the Shure SM81 small diaphragm condenser mic, which is my choice for recording piano in this studio. When you use an SM81, you need to use this special small mic clip in order to attach it to the boom stand. We're going to be using two boom stands to position the mics over the piano. When you're using the SM81s, just like the KSM-141s that we use on the drum kit, they have settings on the mic that need to be the same on both sides. So in the SM81s, they have a switch that sets the bass roll off, which I like to use the flat setting. And then they also have an attenuator, which is a ring that rotates around the top of the mic here. And you want to make sure they're both set to zero and that the bass roll off is set the same on both mics. So whenever we're recording something in stereo, we always have to ask ourselves, which is the right channel and which is the left? Conventionally today, just like with drums, piano is perceived from the audience perspective. So we have the piano set up here just like it would be on stage, with the keyboard perpendicular to the audience, the performer looking off to the audience's right. That places the low strings or the bass strings on the audience's right-hand side, and the treble strings, or the high strings, on the audience's left-hand side. So as I set this up and I patch this into Pro Tools, I'm going to be putting the bass strings into channel two, the right channel, and the treble strings into channel one, the left channel. This is the mic setup that I like to use when I'm recording solo piano for something like jazz or some other kind of edgy uh, hard percussive type sounds. The mics are fairly close to where the hammers are striking the strings. They're about eight, ten inches away from the strings, right up into the piano for a very bright, very intimate sound. This works really well when you're recording solo piano and you don't have any other instruments that might be bleeding into the piano mics. So one thing to pay attention to whenever you're setting the mics is that you want to have them pretty much parallel to the keyboard in this plane and also parallel horizontally the same distance away from the strings. Another possibility is to pull the mics further back out of the just outside the case of the piano so they're just at the rim of this uh, of what we call the crook of the piano and they are still parallel in terms of uh, this plane here but they are at different distances from the hammers this sound will give you a more open and more blended sound. Obviously, it's going to include more of the room. So in situations where you have a nice concert hall or a nice sounding room, pulling the mics back a little bit uh, will give you a nice sound, full sound, out of the piano. It will be less bright, less percussive. And obviously, this will not work when you have other instruments playing in the room because you're going to have just tons of bleed going into these mics. If you happen to be recording in a really awesome concert hall or room that just sounds fantastic, you might want to move the mics even farther back from the piano, perhaps something like this with the mics about four feet away from the case. This is going to include a lot of room sound and it's going to create a very blended and not very stereo separate type of a piano sound. You can adjust the stereo separation across the sound field by moving the microphones closer or farther apart. This is called a spaced stereo pair. Some people like to put the mics about as close together as they would be on a human head, which can help simulate the sound of what we hear in the room. Or they want the mics farther apart to accentuate the stereo spread of the sound. Another possibility is to call, is to use an XY stereo pair, sometimes called a cross stereo pair, where the two mics actually come together like this at their capsules. You bring them both very close together, almost to the point where they're touching. And you want to point the mic that's on my left towards the bass strings, and the mic on my right, the audience right, towards the, the treble strings. This is a somewhat unconventional way to mic a grand piano, but I've seen it mentioned on several websites. It seems to work really well in situations where the performer isn't really happy with the sound that's coming across from the front of the instrument. And the reason is because this replicates the sound that the performer hears as he or she is performing. When you do this type of a setup, again, you want to make sure 
that the mics are in a parallel plane with the keyboard and also horizontally parallel with each other. The next miking technique that I want to show you is what we're going to use in class when we record a band in this room. And what we want to do is try to separate the sound that's going into the piano mics from all the other sounds in the room, like the drums and the guitar and the vocal. So we're going to change things up here quite a bit so that we can have the sound of the piano very focused onto the piano mics and try to isolate everything else in the room. So the first thing we want to do is carefully close the lid on the piano and then just gently slide the music rack forward just a little bit so there's a slot where we can slip our mics in. So here we have the mics just kind of snuck into the case of the piano with as much covered up as possible. We may need to go in and adjust those attenuators down to the negative 10 dB if the person who's playing the piano is a, is a really loud player. We might need to do that and we'll find, out, find that out when we set levels. The other thing to think about when you're using this kind of a miking situation, either in a live setting where you have a band performing on stage and lots of other sounds happening around, or a recording setting like this where we're going to have everybody playing in the room together, if you have a cover for the piano, one of those quilted covers, it's a good idea to put that cover over the piano too to help keep sound from bleeding in through the case. And if you have some studios have uh, like big padded moving blankets and things like that, you can actually cover this area and try and keep these holes from letting sound in from the outside to the piano. Again, for the purpose of trying to isolate the piano sound as much as possible. The trickiest thing with recording a band live in a room uh, is the piano sound picking up everything and then not being able to control the piano sound separate from the, in the mix. So we do want to try to isolate the piano in a, a live recording setting as much as possible. That's it. So we're going to do this on Monday and we'll see how it goes.